Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name's Jasmine Mund, and I'm currently a graduate mechanical engineer on the Nuclear Graduates Programme. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of May, 2023, and I'm here to give you your Fusion News update. And to the key headlines for today's episode. 1. Microsoft agrees to buy electricity generated from Sam Altman-backed fusion company Helion in 2028. 2. To track turbulence in tokamaks, researchers turn to machine learning. 3. UKAA calls on global robotics community to advance fusion energy. 4. Tokamak Energy's fusion magnet set for extreme testing in the US. And make sure you stay till the end, as I have lots of bonus stories today that you definitely don't want to miss. 1. Microsoft agrees to buy electricity generated from Sam Altman-backed fusion company Helion in 2028. Our first story is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting this week. Along with a slew of other news outlets, CNBC have written about the deal that Fusion Industry Association member Helion Energy has struck with Microsoft. This Washington State fusion company announced a power purchase agreement to sell fusion energy to Microsoft by 2028. Under the agreement, Helion has stated that they will be penalized if they can't provide the energy as promised by the deadline. Just to give you a sense of what they're trying to achieve here, the 50 megawatts of energy that their device will produce when up to full speed will be able to power the equivalent of around 40,000 homes. Their long-term goal is to produce even more, a gigawatt, which is a billion watts of energy. Helion is backed by over $500 million in capital, invested by Silicon Valley investors like Sam Altman and Peter Thiel. And with a further $1.7 billion on tap, if they meet their ambitious milestones, Helion clearly thinks that they now have a pathway to providing fusion energy on an aggressive timescale. While everyone in fusion knows all too well the history of putting forth aggressive timeframes, the difference between today's approaches to fusion and history is that the investment is now there to back up the claims. This deal is very much a world first and a true vote of confidence for fusion. So we'll of course continue to report on their progress towards fusion milestones as they come out. Two, to track turbulence in tokamaks, researchers turn to machine learning. Next up is an article published on Newswise by the US Department of Energy's Office of Science. Plasma stability has long been an important research topic regarding magnetic fusion devices, and is key for a device to function for a longer period of time. The study of turbulence within the plasma in a tokamak device is therefore fundamental to the development of these fusion facilities. Gas puff imaging is used to visualize a particular turbulent phenomena called blobs. However, a key challenge is the sheer amount of data that's produced. About one million image frames can be produced from just a single experiment, which is simply too many to analyze individually. The use of machine learning means that rather than producing averages, as before, we're now able to track blobs frame by frame, which gives the ability to analyze these phenomena in a level of detail that will hopefully help to improve our understanding of particle confinement. To me, what this article simply demonstrates is the benefit of the increased use of machine learning and AI as well as the fact that it's now more important than ever that companies work together to tackle the challenge of fusion. Advancements in many different industries can all have an impact on achieving commercial fusion within the aimed timeframe. The article goes into a lot more detail about the science behind this research. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out the links that will be in the description. Three, UKAA called on global robotics community to advance fusion energy. Our third piece of news this week is from a press release published by the UK's Atomic Energy Authority about robotics and automation. Leading technologists from the UK AEA's Fusion Robotics Division, RACE, which stands for Remote Applications in Challenging Environments, are inviting the international robotics community to discuss key challenges at the 2023 IEEE International Conference on Robotics and Automation. A key event will be the unveiling of the UK AEA's haptic training simulator for the first time. This aims to provide remote handling operators with a unique sense of touch and the ability to experience tactile sensations. Professor Rob Buckingham, UK AEA's Director of Race, said, Robotics is key for the entire life cycle of future fusion power stations, from the design and maintenance through to decommissioning. The haptic training simulator is a great example of how successful collaborations and tech transfer between different sectors can support shared goals to provide a better solution for all. If successfully implemented, the haptic training simulator will increase operator performance 
and reduce costs for fusion energy and nuclear fission decommissioning in the future. 4. Tokamak Energy's fusion magnet set for extreme testing in the US. Last but not least is the news reported by the Institute of Mechanical Engineers that Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy's cutting-edge magnet technology will be tested at the US Department of Energy's Sandia Laboratories in Albuquerque under extreme conditions to test lifetime plant performance. Although the shielding within a tokamak is designed to absorb most of the high energy neutron radiation, the secondary gamma rays will still come into contact with the magnets. As such, this must be considered within the design. The specialist gamma radiation cryostat system designed by tokamak energy provides the thermal installation for the magnets to enable them to maintain efficient power plant operation, despite being bombarded by gamma rays. This machine is what will be disassembled and shipped to the Gamma Irradiation Facility in the US. HTS Magnet Development Manager Dr. Rod Bateman stated, The specialist Sandia Laboratory is ideally configured to test magnet durability and performance when exposed to gamma radiation. It is essential to push the boundaries now as we scale up our operations towards commercial fusion. The GIF facility is unique in that it can test large objects and is reportedly so powerful that it needs only two weeks to complete a 60-year lifetime test. The research on these magnets is set to run for six months at the facility, so I'll make sure to let you know the results of these tests as we get more information. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. Firstly, I wanted to point you in the direction of a great article on the Inverse website titled A Strange 1950s Technology Could Finally Bring Fusion Energy to the Grid. It's about stellarators which are fusion devices that use a magnetic design similar to Tokamak's with some key differences. I would definitely check out the article as it gives an easily understandable overview of the technology and I know I really enjoyed learning more about a less commonly mentioned design. Next up, I wanted to mention an article published by Nuclear Engineering International about the relationship between the fusion and fission industries. Although the two can sometimes be seen as rivals, there's a lot to be learned from fission as well as many areas with communalities. So it's important now more than ever to collaborate and work together to progress. My third bonus is episode three from season two of the ITA podcast. This episode is called Falling for Fusion and features interviews with two young fusion enthusiasts. If you haven't listened to the first two episodes of the season either, I would definitely give those a go as well. Uh, in particular, the first episode titled The Women at ITA, I really enjoyed. Next, we have an article written by Yuichi Takase, a senior technical advisor to Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy. It's a worthwhile read if you'd like to know more about his views on fusion. I also wanted to suggest reading an article titled Floor Tap for Laser Fusion Power Plant, where Vice President Fred Hughes speaks about laser fusion, constructing complex energy projects, and Floor's agreement with Longview Fusion Energy Systems, which was signed last month. I'll also make sure there are two links below to two other articles, one by Raja Krishnamurthy and Kelly Armstrong about what fusion means for our future, and one about a visit to TAE Technologies by three US representatives. Both of these just demonstrate that there continues to be interest in fusion from US Congress, which is a great sign for the industry. And last but not least is a paper published in the Journal of Fusion Energy titled Kyoto Fusioneering's Mission to Accelerate Fusion Energy technologies, challenges, and role in industrialization. I'm slightly biased when I say it's a really interesting read as I was a key author on this paper, but if you're interested in learning more about KF as a company, I think it gives a really great overview of what they're up to and how they fit in with the budding fusion ecosystem. So definitely make sure to check it out. And that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment, or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below and you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.